This morning's scripture lesson is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. That's the end of our scripture reading. So before we begin our sermon today, um, I'd like to thank everyone who attended Ash Wednesday services this week and um, chose to come again this Sunday. If you weren't able to come Wednesday, I'll let you in on what kind of went on that night. Um, I was not able to complete a sentence and a half without coughing. Um, every single time I tried to speak, um, I would just begin to cough yeah, pretty, pretty badly. Um, and so it was a bit rough, but I think I'm going to make it through today so far. I hate to jinx myself, um, but I think I'm good for the day. So thank you for coming again. So as we look at our scripture for today, we find the story of Jesus being tempted in the desert for 40 days. Now, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the beginning of Jesus's ministry. We've looked at his baptism. We've looked at the miracle at the wedding of Cana. Uh, we've looked at him calling his disciples to him for the first time. And if you were really paying attention, you probably noticed that we didn't talk about our scripture for today. If we were simply going in chronological order, this would have come directly after his baptism. He's baptized by John the Baptist, and then he goes into the wilderness for 40 days. And the reason that we didn't talk about this scripture over the past few weeks is we were saving it, or I was saving it for its traditional time, which is this week, the first week in Lent. And so in our scripture, we find Jesus being tempted in the desert, and we're reminded that in order for his ministry to begin, he has to overcome these temptations. You see, Jesus, just like we have to, Jesus had to take that first step. Now, maybe you're familiar with the saying, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Well, the journey towards ministry and the journey towards what God wants from us also begins with a single step. Now, what we find with Jesus in his journey and his ministry is that it's a very linear thing. As we look at it in the Gospels and as we read them, we can mark the time and the places and we can see the steps that he's taking towards his ultimate destination. But for us, it doesn't look that way very often. So as we move into the season of Lent, and that's exactly what we call it each and every year, right? The season of Lent or the Lenten season. It's always this time, right? It's the time of period between Ash Wednesday leading up to Easter. But this year, instead of considering it as the season of Lent or just a period of time, I want us to think of it as a journey. You see, just as Jesus found himself on a journey in his ministry, we are also finding ourselves 
on a journey during this season. So on this journey over the next 40 days, and the question with any journey that you have is always this, where are we going? Where is it? Where are we heading to on this journey? Well, on our journey, we are headed to the cross. After all, Lent will end with Easter. Now, when you think about going on a journey, do you get excited? Do you start to think, oh, I can't wait to get there? Is your journey about the journey itself, or is it really about the destination? Like so many of you, our family has started a tradition where we go on a journey each year. And we've uh, gone to th uh, the beach each and every year. That's kind of become our journey or our destination. But really for us, that's all about the destination, right? It's not about the journey. It's a short journey, but it's all about the time that we're spent there. It's about the destination. But as I was growing up, when my family went on vacation, we went on a different type of journey each year. Well, it was the same journey, but it was much different than going to the beach. You see, we would travel by minivan from Oklahoma to Georgia to visit my great aunt, and then from Georgia to Pennsylvania to visit my father's family, and then back to Oklahoma. Now, that trip was not a destination. That trip was a journey. I'd ride in the back of the minivan, and I'd develop the ability to sleep in the back of the car throughout most of the ride. And you can really view that as a good thing. After all, this was before the days of DVD players in cars or cell phones. So it was helpful to keep me quiet so that my parents could focus as they were driving. Uh, to this day, if I'm not driving the car, I'm probably going to fall asleep if we're going more than 30 miles. But I didn't sleep through all of it. You see, the great thing about those trips was I got to see so much of the country on our journeys. And if... You see, if we had just had a destination in mind, part of that trip would have been lost on me. See, the journey itself was great. And I think sometimes we forget about that in our own lives. We have this destination that we're looking forward to, but we get so bogged down in the journey that we forget that we have things that we should be doing, and yes, even enjoying on that journey. So our destination as Christians is what? Where are we going? Well, we're going to heaven, right? If we're saved. But we still have to complete this journey that is called life. And when sometimes we let it get us beat so down that we forget that there are good things on the journey as well. But throughout this journey of this Lenten season towards the cross, we should be thinking about two things. And I want us to focus on two things. The first is repentance. Asking the for forgiveness of our sins and then turning away from them. The second thing is the renewal of our spirit. Finding ways to bring ourselves closer to God. Now today we're going to focus on repentance. So for us, when we talk about what it means to repent, we're talking about how we are to approach God and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. But we are told in scripture that we are not just to ask for the forgiveness of sins to repent. We are to turn away from those sins and do them no more. The idea is that we'll be able to do this, repent, and then not commit that sin again. I think it's important to remember that though we are followers of Christ, we are not Christ himself. See, we see how he resists in the desert the temptations that the, Satan puts before him. If we were in that situation, the ones, the things that Satan offered to him, would we be able to resist them? Now, we want to immediately say, absolutely, right? Absolutely, I'd be able to, to resist those things. But if we're honest with ourselves, do we not fall down for much less things than the entire world. See, there's this idea that when we're on a journey, we're always on a straight, linear motion. We're always moving forward. That we're going to repent, we're going to leave our sin behind and continue that walk forward, and we'll never, ever stumble again. We'll never commit that same sin again. 
Now that is what we hope for, that is what we pray for, that is what we strive for. And that is what we want. But as I said before, we are the followers of Christ. We are not Christ himself. And so more than likely what we will find in our lives is more often than not, instead of that journey being straight to our destination, we will find ourselves taking two steps forward and one step back. Now, is that okay for us to simply use that as an excuse? I am just a human. I know I'll fall, and I'll just ask God for forgiveness again. Well, no, it is not. It is not what we should be going for, and it should never be our mindset when it comes to repentance. But the truth is that we will, more than likely, fall again. Try as hard as we might, we will find ourselves in places that will require us to ask for forgiveness again and again. But that, brothers and sisters, is part of the journey. And as I said before, we find ourselves taking two steps forward and one step back. Well, if you do the math, and I'm not great at math, but I can do this problem. If you take two steps forward and one step back, guess what? You're still one step ahead of where you were before. See, there is no way that any of us will ever move forward without stumbling and falling. But we are not defeated when we fall. We are only defeated when we refuse the hand that Christ has given to us to help us get back up again. I think one of the greatest tricks that Satan has ever pulled on people is this idea that when you fall, you are down for good. The idea that you can never get back up again and start again. So are you feeling like that today, church? Are you feeling like you've fallen down a lot lately? And I don't just mean physically, but I mean in your heart. Have you been feeling like you're falling short of the glory of Christ? Well, you need to know that though you may have fallen down, you do not have to stay down. Christ is always willing to help you get back up and start again. As Grant said this morning in the children's message, it was spot on. All you got to do is ask him. So if you need to grab onto his hand and get back up, well, then guess what? It's time to repent. It's time to ask for that forgiveness. It's time to take his hand and move forward on your journey. And when you fall down this time, get back up. Now, I want to close this morning with another idea about getting back up and starting your journey. Now, I've told you that it is through Christ that we can do this thing. We can do that. It's through his sacrifice on the cross that we are forgiven and able to repent. But as the family of God, we have a responsibility here as well. It is our responsibility to help our brothers and sisters and our neighbors when they fall. It is our responsibility to help them get back up again. Too often what I have seen in the church and I wrote this this morning, or the other day, I wrote the modern church, but honestly, I think this is a problem that goes all the way back to the disciples. What I've seen is this. When someone falls down, we let them be separated from us because of their sin. As if their sin is greater than our sin. Well, again, brothers and sisters from Scripture, we know that sin is sin to God. There's no big sin. There's no little sin. It is all judged the same by him. So we got to stop thinking about other sin being greater than ours. It's not our job to keep someone down when they fall. It is our job to help them back up. We can't forgive them of their sins, but we can help them see the one who can. So as we journey towards the cross this season, let us adopt an attitude of repentance let us take the hand of Christ that he has offered to us to help us back up when we fall down. And let us do all that we can to help others find him so that they can get back up again as well. Amen. My challenge for you this week is this. It's time to repent and to get back up again.